Today on Family Talk. Well, hello, everyone. This is Family Talk, and I'm Dr. James Dobson, and I'm delighted that you've joined us today. Uh, I can just imagine who's out there and what you're doing, all the different walks of life, and to think that you have paused, or maybe uh, you're listening to us while driving in the car. I don't know where you are or what you're doing. I just know I care about you, and we're here because of you. And today we're going to do something very unusual. I never like to stay in the same place for more than a day or two, and uh, I also like you to know that we consider you partners with us. Uh, we're not in this thing alone. If, if we were, we would go up in flames. We've got to have the people out there who care about us, who care about what we're doing, not just because of financing, but because of prayer and because uh, we feel you putting an arm around us. We're here for your family. We're concerned about your family. I'm especially concerned about your kids, the younger generation, because they're growing up in a world, as my father said, much farther gone into moral decline than the world into which uh, I was born a number of years ago. And it's getting worse. And what's going on in the public schools? Uh, not all bad, but an awful lot of bad things are taking place there. And uh, what's going on in the culture of, at large, what Hollywood is preparing for your kids, and how um, these forces uh, that uh, influence thought and faith and belief systems are just hammering away at the Judeo-Christian system of values. Uh, And uh, we are dedicated to trying to preserve uh, what we've lost and uh, to rebuild it, if possible. And those of you who are concerned about your kids, just know that we're here for you and uh, we pray for you and we ask you to pray for us. Now, I said we were going to do something a little bit unusual today. Our purpose today is to give you an inside look at Family Talk. Why are we here? Well, I sort of just answered that question, but where are we going and what is our goal? And are there uh, new concepts and new objectives and uh, new initiatives that uh, really characterize what this ministry is all about? The answer is yes, and we're going to tell you about one of them today. Now, let me go back to an early morning time when I was sound asleep. This was not too long ago, several months ago, and uh, I woke up, and I woke up worrying. I woke up uh, being aware of the brevity of time that I will not be here forever and that uh, what will happen when the Lord takes me home. Uh, First, let me tell you that uh, the Lord has blessed me with good health. It is really quite amazing. I had a physical just three days ago, and I am in as good a shape as I have been Uh, in a long, long time. You know, I've had some bumps in the road going back 28 years, but the Lord has brought me through those, and um, I now appear to have a very strong heart and uh, have uh, come through prostate cancer, and the Lord has healed me of that, and I have a lot of energy, and I'm grateful for these days uh, to do the work of the Lord. But, but... That won't last forever. I don't know how to tell you this, but it won't last forever for you either. You know, we have a an allocated amount of time that the Lord has said that he has put us here uh, as individuals. And uh, there will come a time when the Lord will call us and off we will go to be with him forever. I don't believe that's around the corner, but who knows? Who knows? And there is a concept that I want you to understand. The concept is called a suddenly. That's a term that Shirley and I use for circumstances that come out of the blue. 
Um, you know, a person wakes up in the morning and he or she is feeling good. And by noontime, they're in the hospital and everything changes. That's a suddenly. Do you have any suddenlies in your life? Have you ever had one? Have you ever had something occur that you were totally and completely unprepared for? They come. They come to us all. And I woke up thinking about suddenlies. Uh, the Lord has blessed this ministry of family talk. Uh, it really has. Amazing. We've only um, been um, in existence for about eight years now. And we went back and started where I was in 1977 when I started Focus on the Family. Well, those days are gone, and this is a new day when we're taking another run at uh, doing whatever we can to support the institution of the family. And uh, again, God is blessing us. We're heard on about 1,200 um, radio outlets per day. There's a lot of people out there. And from all indications, they want to hear what we have to say. And we're growing all the time. We've just uh, added four bot stations. We're really pleased about that. One of them's in Oklahoma City, one of them's in Kansas City, one of them's in St. Louis, and the other one is in Central California. And we're looking at others. And we're growing. God is blessing us, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, but the more we succeed and the more we grow, the more important it is to think about the possibility of a suddenly, to prepare for it so that uh, those who are left behind, those who continue to have this responsibility, are uh, not caught unaware if such a thing should take place. No, if, when such a thing takes place. Every ministry ought to be thinking this way. Not those who are uh, on the older side of things, but everybody. The leaders of ministries that are 35 years of age ought to be thinking this way because suddenly happen to younger people too. And so I went to my board with this and uh, they agreed that it's time for us to think through the suddenly and what would occur if uh, suddenly, suddenly, uh, there was a, a need for a change of leadership and that uh, most of all, the message the Lord has given me, which has been going on now for almost 50 years, that it should not just go away. You think of 30 books that I've written. There have been 20 million of them sold. They're out there. And uh, all of those concepts about the family that have a biblical base, uh, that should be preserved. And to do so, we will need leadership. And that's what we have been talking about. And that's what I came to share with you today. Because there is a man who has agreed to pitch his tent with us. His name is Dr. Tim Clinton. You've heard him. He's been on the radio with us. He has done radio programs for us. And um, many of our listeners know him through his own books. He's written about 30 books of his own. And um, a whole string of responsibilities related to the same things that I believe. What pleases me the most is that Dr. Clinton and I see eye to eye on the family on, as far as I know, everything. I, I've never sat down with him and had a conversation where we found irreconcilable differences between us. We get our information and our love for family and our love for the people and the younger generation. So we get that from the scripture. It tells us what to do. It tells us what's right, what's wrong. And so um, it's rare to find a professional in this field who is in sync with me 
on these issues, and we have found one. Dr. Tim Clinton. I'm going to tell you who he is in a minute because some of you may not know, but uh, others, uh, this will be uh, familiar territory for you. Tim, welcome to Family Talk. Dr. Dobson, I'm so honored to be here. Um, listening to you, it just takes me back years. Um, I'll never forget, and I want to say thank you uh, on behalf of my family for how you have spoken into my life personally. Uh, I was a boy growing up in rural Pennsylvania, and my dad uh, was a rural pastor, a country pastor, an old circuit riding pastor. He had three small churches that he uh, went to and spoke at each of them on every Sunday. But Dr. Dobson, I remember uh, packing up and heading to a school named Liberty University as a boy. I was able to go there because Dr. Falwell, who was uh, the founder of the school, offered a pastor's scholarship, Mm -hmm. which meant if you were a PK, a pastor's kid, you could come to school for free. And so I... Is that really what uh, That's how I happened. wound up going to Liberty University as a boy. Yeah, that uh-huh. pastor scholarship. And by the way, there was a young lady who grew up in Montana who was able to go to Liberty on a valedictorian scholarship. She was valedictorian of her class. We met at Liberty. That's where I met Julie, my wife. But I uh, felt called to the ministry. And uh, I'll never forget... Um, as I'm going through my pastor's ministry major, I minored in Greek. I double minored my junior year and decided to take counseling. The very first counseling class I took was on a Wednesday night. It was held at Thomas Road Baptist Church. The instructor was a gentleman named Dr. Ed Heinsen, and he was teaching a class on marriage and family. And one of the textbooks, the primary textbook for the class, was a book called Dr. Dobson Answers Your Questions. <laughs> And that's how I started this journey. And uh, through the years, you've influenced us on how to raise our children. But um, as I moved more and more into the mental health field, um, so much of what you opened up the door, the conversation in the church and the Christian community at large um, has been so instructive. And uh, Dr. Here, uh, we are, I, here we are together right now. Yeah, this I, is can't, a moment. I can't tell you what that means to me. Tim. We call each other by profession names here, but I'm Jim and you're Tim and we're going to be working together. And I want to tell you that um, I find great comfort in having another colleague here uh, to strategize with and work together in trying to uh, save as much of the family as we possibly can. That's your passion too, isn't it? Yeah. I, I share that with you, Dr. Dobson. The family is, I think the pace, the pain, the pressure of modern day life continues just to decimate the home. Mm -hmm. When you look at some of the sobering statistics that are out there, you realize that divorce is still an epidemic. Um, Mm -hmm. You've got so many children growing up without a dad. I think I saw recently that nearly 40% of America's kids are going to grow up sometime in the home, their home where their biological father doesn't live before age 18. Let let me put a a, a fine point on that. Actually, at birth, more than 40% of babies are born out of wedlock. There's no dad on the scene from the beginning. And then you add divorce to that and abandonment and abuse and all the other things that can interfere with a, a mother and a father and their efforts to raise a child. Um, but when you get into the African-American community, it is more than 70 percent. I think the latest figure I saw is close to 75 percent of those babies are born out of wedlock. And uh, it, it works its way on down from there. Uh, so, um, you know, the, the problem of the absentee father who is just non-existent, he's not in the home. Um, is a huge problem, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, Let me take a a moment to tell people who you really are. 
uh, because this is your bio, and I want to read it so everybody will know who you're listening to in days to come. Dr. Tim Clinton is the president of the American Association of Christian Counselors, AACC. That's the largest and most diverse Christian counseling association in the world with 50,000 members. He's also the executive director and professor of counseling and pastoral care for the James C. Dobson Center for Child Development, Marriage, and Family Studies at Liberty University, one of the finest schools in the country. Dr. Clinton has a doctorate in education and is licensed in the state of Virginia as a professional counselor and marriage and family therapist. Dr. Clinton also has founded Light University. That's an institution that provides certificates and diplomas for those seeking continued education in the mental health arena. They have enrolled almost 300,000 students since its inception. He is a member of President Trump's Faith Advisory Board and works on the leadership team for the National Prayer Breakfast. Dr. Clinton is a frequent guest host on Dr. James Dobson Who, (laughs) Family Talk, and hosts his own radio program through American Family Radio called Life, Love, and Family. He has authored over 30 books. I told you that a minute ago. And uh, one of them is The Struggle is Real, How to Care for Mental and Relational Health Needs in the Church. Tim and his wife, Julie, have been married for 37 years and have two children, Megan and Zach. Does that kind of summarize it? I I bet you there's at least this much information on you that's of relevance uh, in addition uh, to this. You are one busy man. How do you have time to work with us? Uh, Dr. Dobbs, it's been quite a journey. Um, But for me, um, my relationship here goes to um, your commitment to the family. Uh, for years, again, I've watched you stand strong for what you believed mattered. And what I really appreciated most about you, Dr. Dobson, was your, your commitment not to worry about being popular. It was more about being uh, truthful and right and willing to stand even against the tide uh, saying, listen, we've got to call ourselves back to what really matters. Dr. Dobson, I'm simple things like eating dinner together, Mm -hmm. um, having family devotions, uh, Mm -hmm. developing emotional closeness with your kids, give them a Dutch rub or two, Mm -hmm. being at the ball game. How many times have we heard you say, make sure your kids know what be there means? Mm -hmm. That the most important thing you could do as a mom or dad was to make sure your kids were introduced to Jesus Christ. And on that grand resurrection morning we will look for each other and find each other and be together throughout eternity that's the most exciting thought to me in a whole realm of reality is knowing that um, through jesus christ we have an opportunity to bring somebody with us and we start with our own kids and our own family that's job one for parents, as far as I'm concerned. I still remember you coming to Liberty University for a commencement address, and I remember the closing illustration. You talked about how life would trash your trophies, Mm. and you gave the illustration of um, how Mm. you played tennis, and somehow your trophies but. They were at some school wound up in a trash bin or something. (laughs) You closed by saying this, remember, though, in the end... All that will really matter is who you loved and who loved you. And that clicked. Mm. Uh, For years, I've spent um, a lot of my journey uh, trying to help educate the church on mental health-related issues, on depression, um, what ADHD looked like. Uh, You've written on strong-willed child and everything so much. But when you start really just bringing all this together, coalescing it together, you begin to realize that people are hurting. It's frantic. It seems like it's almost tenfold today. 
for whatever reason, the culture, the times have taken us uh, to a place in our families that people are just barely hanging on and they're searching for answers. I believe that people are coming back to the church in droves looking for help. Will the church be there? Will parachurch organizations like Family Talk continue to stand on the gap? Who's speaking for the family? And more, Julie and I have had numerous conversations, Dr. Dobson, about you, about Family Talk, about um, the future, and more. And for me, this is more of a calling issue. When you were looking at family and faith, I think about how you've been a champion for the faith. Uh, You've stood up boldly. I mean, when people are coming at you, I know that you've had many death threats through the years. I know what your family has gone through uh, on a personal level and yet stood strong and said, it matters. We need to stand for what uh, Christ is all about, what the Word of God says. That's a dying breed. Mm. You know, uh, Apostle Paul says, by all means, save some. And we're trying to do that. Uh, we have not won the battle. In fact, if you go back to 1977, when I left uh, academia, left the university, and started a ministry, uh, if you look at where we were then and where we are now, uh, we not only haven't won the battle, we've lost a lot of ground. Uh, but we have saved some, I hope. And that's our purpose now to reach out to those in need and you want to help me do that and uh, i don't know how you're going to work all this in but you're kind of a workaholic anyway aren't you (laughs) well i also like being at the game dr dobson you know that i love the outdoors and uh, there's so many things that and the game is uh, the one your son plays in yes indeed Uh, Uh, he plays baseball at liberty he does and you don't miss very many games do you Probably. I try to find you, and you're in a <laughs> stadium someplace. <laughs> um, again, that goes back to some seeds that were planted into my heart and life. That started with my own father. Uh, my dad was, uh, as I said, a pastor who, uh, I would say this, he was, he really was a dad. He loved you, didn't he? Yeah. You know, my dad never raised his hand to me, ever. Never mm-hmm. spanked me. I probably needed a few, no but there were some. You're a brat. Now, my mother, now that's a whole different story. <laughs> but my dad it was the kindest man I've ever met. And uh, he was the kind of man that um, you didn't want to disappoint him. There was just something about him. He was, he was tender, he was very present. Um, I remember Tim taking us. We didn't grow up with swimming pools, we grew up swimming in the creek in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. They call it the creek, not the creek, the creek. But uh, he would take us, he'd load up the whole van, take basically the entire, the entire neighborhood uh, down there. We'd play softball on Sunday night, young peoples. He loved kids. He loved living. He loved life. But he's the man who also said, Tim, uh, this is a mission. Tim, do you have hope for the future of the family? I'm encouraged, Dr. Dobson. I, for many years, uh, I taught... Um, students at uh, the undergrad level at Liberty University, uh, sometimes as many as 4,000 students a year, so 2,000 a semester. And because of that class, it engaged me at that level of seeing through their eyes. And I tell you, so encouraged because in so many ways, there's such a hunger. They want a connection. They want to get relationships right like never before. Maybe, maybe there might be some powerful, mighty days in front of us. I look forward to working with you, man. (laughs) I'm excited. I love you like a brother. We've known each other for a long, long time. I know your value system. I know your integrity. I know your love for family. And I know your love for Jesus Christ. And uh, together, let's see what we can accomplish. I'm excited to be a part of the Family Talk team. There's a lot going on here. It's an exciting (laughs) place. People have no idea what's occurring. It's pretty wild. Uh, What a great team. Uh, God's at work. Give Julie my regards. Thank you, Dr. Dobson. Family Talk is not associated with Focus on the Family.
Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Tim Clinton. I've got some exciting news to share on behalf of Family Talk. One of our most loyal friends uh, understands our summer journey. They actually have, this summer, given us a $200,000 matching grant. That means that any gift we receive between now and May 31st, Any gift we receive between now and May 31st, up to the grand amount of $200,000, will be doubled for the ministry. Let me ask you to do this. If you're able to make a contribution, would you help us get to that matching grant? It helps keep us on target. It helps us continue the development of the all-new James Dobson Family Institute and more. Dr. Dobson, you know this. He's been fighting for the family for over 40 years, and we're not going to stop now. We're just getting started, as a matter of fact. Uh, You can make your donation securely online. Just simply go to drjamesdobson.org. Or if you prefer, you can pledge your support by simply calling our toll-free number. The toll-free number, 877-732-6825. That number again, 877-732-6825. Hey, on behalf of Dr. Dobson, let me say thank you for your prayers, your support of our ministry, and uh, pray God gives you a great summer.